Today we're going to be looking at a Dell T620. We're going to be upgrading the memory, power supply, hard drives, and uh, networking adapters. Okay, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the side of our case here first. Once we have our case off, I'm gonna take the shroud out. And then you wanna get a Phillips. We're gonna go ahead and Replace the CPU first. All right, now that we have our screwdriver, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove our CPU off. So once you get this, the heat sink off, I like using um, tissues to get all the old thermal paste off because you're going to want to always clean the surface off before you put a new CPU on because you want to use new thermal paste because that's probably all dry and, and bad now. So go ahead and get yourself a box of tissues and we can go ahead and clean our surface here. I think it just does a quick and easy way to remove it. You're going to do the same thing to the actual CPU. Make sure you get all that thermal paste off. Once you are pretty satisfied with it, you can go ahead and pull that out. Remove your CPU carefully. I like touching just the the ends of it. And then you want to either find a static bag or a CPU um, holder. So I'm grabbing mine right now. You just place it right in there. And seal that up. And then we're going to grab our new CPU. We're going to place that down there. You want to make sure your notches line up with the notches on the CPU board. And then, since this is a used CPU, there's some thermal paste on it. So I like to clean that, get all that old stuff off, because we're going to put brand new stuff on. Let's see, got some on there. Once you got that all cleaned off, you go ahead and seal that back on. Seal it up. Make sure it's all nice and clean. You can double check this, make sure that's all nice and clean. And then now we are ready to grab our thermal paste. And we can go ahead and I like doing one notch. A thermal paste and then on the side but everyone has their own theory of doing that so do whatever you prefer So one thing I like to do is I like putting the the CPU heatsink on our new processor and I like to screw it all the way down and then screw it back off and I'm going to show you why we're going to do that. We're going to want to do that because we want to make sure that there's thermal paste all over the CPU because you're going to get issues if you don't have a proper um, cooling on that CPU. So let's go ahead and just tighten it all down as much as it can go.
I'm gonna make sure they're all snug because you want that thermal paste to spread across that CPU. And now let's go ahead and remove it. That one's got a squeaky spring. <laughs> all right, once you got it removed, then you can take it off and you can see we have thermal paste all the way around that CPU and that's what exactly what we want. So once you see that you have your thermal paste all the way on that CPU and you know you're good, you go ahead and screw it back on. <clears throat> if you find that you have some part of that CPU surface area exposed, just do a little dab. Just do a little dab of thermal paste and then you know you're pretty, pretty good. And you screw that CPU back on. You also don't want too much thermal paste because too much thermal paste is going to not cool the CPU as, as efficient as it could which can cause issues down the road. And that's pretty much it. That's all for the CPU part. So now we're gonna work on just putting some memory in, which is the easiest thing ever. So if you wanna get your memory ready, you can go ahead and open up all our memory base there, all open. If you get any dust or anything, you wanna make sure you spray that out of there. So we got our memory here. These are 16 gig DIMMs. I like placing everything on anti-static bags. So you wanna find your notch. You wanna place it properly in there. Make sure you move anything that's gonna be in the way. And you literally just push down and I'll snap right into place. This thing's gonna be a beast. We've upgraded the memory from 32 gigs to 96 gigs we put an h300 control h710 uh raid controller um we've upgraded the cpu from an e5 2440 v2 to a 2470 v2 which is 10 cores uh 20 threads so once you got all that done now we can put our shroud um back on here these things are always a pain in the butt sometimes goes down. But surprisingly, that was pretty smooth. Since we get that done, now we can go ahead and sear our case back on. And then we'll move on to the hard drives and the power supply. Alright, we have the server turned over. Uh, this is literally the easiest upgrade you can do. We're going from one power supply to uh, two redundant um, power supplies. So literally you can just pull this blank panel out. Make sure, this is very important, <clears throat> you want to have the exact same watt power supply. So this is the 495, you want to add it with the 495. If you upgrade it to the 1000 or the 980 power supply, you can really do some damage. Um, to your server. So you want to make sure you use the same watt um, power supply. And now we have redundant power supplies. We went ahead and added our Nix, our USB 3.0. Um, this thing is ready to rock and roll. Alright, so now that we're looking at the front of the server, we're going to go and put our drives in here. And we're only going to do four drives um, because we have uh, four 
four terabyte drives, which is going to be plenty of storage for what we're going to be using this server for. So you're going to go ahead and slide all those drives in the front, push it all the way in first, and then click it in. And then you just push it all the way in, click, done. So once we get all the drives in here, we're going to go into our RAID controller card, set up RAID, and what I like doing, especially if I have four drives, is uh, either RAID 5 if you really need to have all that storage, or RAID 10, um, which is going to be a lot better for performance um, when you got four drives in there a little bit, they're not um, faster drives, so RAID 10 is going to help that, um, so that's where we're going to get configured up next. Alright, now we have the server powered up. I hooked up a screen to it, um, and we can quickly see that um, it does now show 96 gigs of memory. Um, it's showing the new 2.4 gigahertz um, CPU. So uh, it's just telling us right now that it looks like there was someone already had a, other hard drives in there, and um, there was already a configuration file in there. So we're gonna go ahead um, and hit any key because we want to um, configure that. Um, RAID controller card with the new hard drives that we just put into it. I um, mean, we also want to go into the BIOS just to double check. It reads the all the memory, all the DIMMs. It reads the new CPU. Um, so we're going to check that once we get done with our um, hard drive configuration and RAID setup. All right, so now we can go ahead and go to our system BIOS. You know, system information. You know where all that information's at. Um, I'm going to our memory settings. You can see it's reading the 96 gigs. ECC. So that's good. Hit back. We go to our processor settings to make sure it's showing the new processor, which it is. Um, we want virtualization. Make sure we have virtualization enabled. Um, and execute. Um, is enabled. Head back. And then that's pretty much it. We don't need to do anything else in there, so we're going to go ahead and hit finish. If you want to, go to your iDRAC settings. This is probably a good time to update it, and we can change our network settings for that. Also, we will probably want to reset um, the iDRAC password to the default. You know, just once in, we. Uh, Get that all done. I like to just enable DHCP and then set that as a static IP later. Everything else looks okay. And back. There we go. User configuration. We want to get to there. We want to know our default is root, and we want to change our password. Set it to something other than the default. Let's <laughs> see to type it in again. I've seen uh, hackers get into iDRAX and share malware on a network through the file sharing in the iDRAX. It's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> I mean, what they come up with once they gain access to a corporate network. So once we're done, we need to reboot and go into our iDRAC settings so we can go ahead and set up RAID. Alright, once we get that screen, the BIOS passed, and now we're just waiting for the spot where it's talking about <clears throat> our um, RAID card, because we're going to go into our RAID now and configure it for RAID 10, so you can see uh, Control R is going to get us into our RAID controller. You can see we put four drives in that server, so you can see all four drives are being detected. You want to go up here to no configuration present, press F2 for our operations, and we're going to create a new VD, virtual uh, drive, um, or I mean virtual disk, uh, and go down to RAID 10, and then you want to hit tab so you can get to your, and then hit the space bar to select what drives you want in that array 
and you can see we're going to have at the end of the day 7.4 terabytes we're going to be installing esxi on here so i just like to you know just say it's exi store um all the other settings are pretty much good defaults we're going to get okay okay and it's going to take us back to our main screen here in just a second sorry Okay, so you can see the new VD has been created. Um, I also like to hit F2 <clears throat> and initialize. And I like to do the fast initialization. Hit yes. You can see the progress completed. Hit OK. So now we are ready to install <clears throat> ESXi now. Alright, so once our uh, RAID configuration is done on the server, now we can go to google.com, type in ESXi free, and you're going to click on that first link, and um, <clears throat> you're going to want to go to the download button there. Once you get a downloads, you're going to get taken here, and you're going to get asked to sign in. Once you sign in, go to the download packages, and you can see our the latest version right now is 6.7. So you're going to do manual download. You're going to download it to an ISO. And once that is done, then you're going to use something called like, um, I mean, I use HDD raw copy, but there's a dozen of these different tools. It basically takes that ISO and I'm writing it to a thumb drive. And then once that is done, we can take that thumb drive out. So then the ISO is burned onto that um, thumb drive. We can put it in our server, boot up via USB, and now we can start ESXi on our new server. All right, we got our thumb drive in our server. Um, now we're just waiting for the BIOS to come up. We want to hit a F11 to um, change our boot uh, option. So let's just let this run through real quick. And it picked up our, our virtual drive that we created earlier. And then we should be able to find a thumb drive to boot from once that boot menu comes up. So we want to go to BIOS boot and then once we hit the BIOS boot we want to scroll down to our hard drive and you can see we can now select front USB ultra so we're going to choose that and hit enter and we should be able to get our ESXi uh, loading window which there it is just came up you can hit auto or you hit enter just to start it right away and uh, we're going to stop the video right now because this takes probably a good five to ten minutes depending on how fast your server is um, so we'll continue once this gets done loading all right we um, went ahead a little bit so you're going to agree to the terms of service and then hit next and then you're going to get to uh, select the disk you want to choose to install ESXi on. So of course we're going to choose our big uh, 7.2 terabyte uh, data store. So hit enter. Of course US for default. We're going to enter our password that we're going to use. Hit enter. And it's just verifying um, all your hardware right now and then Go ahead and hit F11 to start the install. And now we just have to wait. So it's on ESXi. It's going to ask you um, to remove the thumb drive once it's done installing. So you're going to remove that thumb drive and then your reboot. And then you can connect to it via the vSphere console or the web interface now. Um, yeah, so that's all there is to it. You're all set.